Hi, Sebastian. Thank you for joining us today. Uh, for those that may not know, tell us about Ascenda. What is the problem that Ascenda solves and for whom? Absolutely. Ascenda is a fintech that makes loyalty simple for financial services companies. And that means delivering very customizable rewards programs for a variety of different financial services brands, whether it's banks, card issuers, uh, now digital wallets, uh, and other fintechs. And it really goes beyond just the technology to also cover uh, aspirational rewards content, and even in some cases uh, for clients that, uh, that need it, customer servicing. So the problem we are solving with that is historically when financial services brands have wanted to bring really good rewards programs to life, they faced an enormous amount of complexity and also cost. Often having to work with many different vendors to piece together uh, the required elements for a really good uh, rewards proposition. And big global brands like Amex and City have been long the, the standard, setting the standard in, in great rewards programs. But if you think about the breadth of, of what they're offering, putting that together for a uh, second, third tier bank in a mid-sized market can be a, a real challenge. It starts with the ledger you need to track the rewards currency, the marketing automation to run campaigns, the content you need to find, um, sometimes getting a premium concierge provider to provide a special experience for your best customers. And by the time that you perform all those uh, contracts, tech integrations, um, and you add up all those costs, it can become entirely prohibitive. So Ascender now delivers that same world-class rewards program uh, in a single box uh, not only making it simple, but also affordable and fast to launch. Thank you very much. And my next question links up nicely to the first one. Uh, what are the benefits of loyalty programs for consumers as well as financial institutions? Yeah, so there's, um, you know, there's obviously a lot of uh, history in, in rewards uh, that goes much beyond financial services. Um, most, uh, most consumers remember for, for many decades the development of frequent flyer programs, for example, that have really transformed uh, the airline industry and are one of the most popular forms of, uh, of loyalty programs. But the benefits, yeah, as you say, are, are really uh, a win-win across both the brands that operate programs as well as customers. For brands, it's really all about a play of differentiation and longer-term engagement going beyond just providing a transactional, functional product that fulfills a basic utility to creating more emotional kind of attachment, um, introducing elements of, of gamification and also more frequent touch points with customers to bring them back more often into the brand's environment. And a good loyalty program can, can achieve all of those things, plus deliver a whole wealth of additional data to brands about their customers that they that they wouldn't have had access to before now for the customer what is in it All right this is an interesting question because there are those who say rewards programs are just you know a confusing customer scheme brands should just give cash back and pass on lower fees rather than inventing a complex you know uh, system to fool customers into thinking they are getting great value but the reality is um, we are emotional creatures as humans and we enjoy a good experience. Just getting low fees or cashback, whilst rationally may provide you a very clear, uh, definitive value on paper. It can also be incredibly boring and unexciting. <laughs> and often, and some of us have experienced this, right? When you've had a cashback uh, card, for example, or you've been a part of a cashback scheme, the few dollars cash back you earn here and there, it just disappears into your statement and actually doesn't provide you any kind of feeling of gratification um, because it's so, it's so functional. And this is where a well-designed rewards program can really make the difference and introduce that aspirational element and provide value that the customer could otherwise not access. I mean, imagine, right? Um, in the UK, for example, um, customers love collecting Avios. One of the ways in which they do collect Avios is through different 
payment cards and credit cards. And with those avios, which you've been earning all year on your card, maybe at the end of the year, you're going to take your spouse on a trip to the Caribbean in business class, which otherwise you probably would have never paid for, um, for that ridiculous business class fare. But thanks to the points, you're able to open up that experience um, and it's probably going to be a very memorable trip and you're going to snap some pictures and post them on Instagram. And it, it, it adds a whole depth of richness that earning a few dollars of cash back here and there just wouldn't be able to provide. So for the consumer, I think beyond just the value of getting something back, it is also introducing the richness and the additional incremental value that only great rewards can provide, but cash cannot. Thank you. That's a very really nice uh, description of the app benefits for the consumers. Um, so, but the, the, what, what are the most popular types of uh, reward programs that you observe today in the financial sector? Yeah, so in, in financial services, you basically have three types of, of programs. There is the simple straight cashback. Um, in many markets, there's a plethora of different cashback products. They are simple, they're very transparent. Uh, and, and they have an important place. And generally, they tend to be a little bit more popular uh, in the mass market segment. Um, then you have what's called proprietary rewards currencies. So these are brands who have decided to operate their own currency. So you're earning bank points or you're earning uh, uh, you know, merchant points. And those points can then be used in a variety of different ways. And here, it's up to the brand to decide how to make that exciting. What kind of interesting use cases can they come up with for the points to actually make those points more interesting than just cash? Uh, and this is where a good loyalty program differentiates from a boring one, because in a boring program, you can use your points to get gift cards. Perhaps you can use your points to get a toaster that's been around for decades, but it's really not much more than cashback. Interesting rewards programs, again, try to allow you to transform those points into experiences. So perhaps it's redeeming a one-for-one -one dinner at a beautiful restaurant. Perhaps it is redeeming that front cabin seat to take your spouse out on an amazing trip. Or perhaps it's redeeming an upgrade uh, for a hotel suite to get a weekend away, um, even you know nearby, just for a, for a short getaway. Those are the types of, of things that a good proprietary rewards program uh, can bring to life. And then the third category is what's called co-brand programs. And these have been super popular in the payment cards uh, space, where basically banks and card issuers have partnered with big merchants to issue co-branded cards where you are earning only one specific partner currency. Maybe you are earning Marriott points, maybe you are earning Avios, um, but you're locked into that one currency. And these have generally been very popular with the people that are really loyal to those specific currencies. If you're a big collector and loyal to Marriott, then maybe you're gonna get a Marriott uh, credit card. But generally, we have found that uh, for the most high spending, and desired customers, a proprietary flexible program is generally the best and most appealing choice because you're not locked into any one specific type of reward. You retain flexibility and you have access to a broad set of exciting uh, redemption options. And this is how leaders like American Express have built their programs and made them uh, so, so compelling over, uh, over, over many years. Thank you very much. And now we're going to more academic side of the rewards programs. Uh, recently, Ascenda um, published the top 50 most valuable financial services loyalty programs, including the breakdown by value, geographical breakdown, and um, future forecasts of the market. Can you please comment on this? And uh, what was the initial goal of the research and uh, what were the uh, major outcomes? Yeah. So. The reason we kicked off this piece of research was really to uncover and make visible the tremendous hidden value that sits within some of these financial services brands, whether they're traditional uh, or challenger brands, within their loyalty and rewards programs. 
And this was really inspired by uh, the developments that have unfolded over the last decade or so in the, in the airline uh, loyalty space, where frequent flyer programs have evolved from being just these functional peripheral tools uh, that have been cost centers and not much more in the past, in the last 10 years, really becoming core driving marketing engines and even standalone successful businesses uh, for some of the airlines, all the way to the point where the pandemic highlighted uh, in, in many cases that the loyalty programs within the airlines were making the most money of any business division. <laughs> Um, within within those companies and in some cases were even used as assets to securitize bailout loans that the airlines have taken on uh, during the pandemic period. So tapping into that real asset value of their rewards program, the membership base, the data that sits within it, the loyalty that it creates uh, and translating that into something very tangible like a securitized uh, asset in a, in a loan. So. We've, we thought, well, wait a minute. The sector after travel where rewards programs play a massive role is financial services. And we believe that financial services has the potential to go on a similar journey as the airlines have, where today for the majority, the loyalty and rewards programs within those banks and, and fintechs are still kind of considered as peripheral as add-ons to the to the core business but gradually some have already woken up and started to think about them more as assets of their own right and one of the ways that we wanted to highlight that hidden asset value is by attempting a valuation exercise of these rewards programs and really making it a formal uh, a formal model so that it's no longer sort of a, a fluffy a conversational anecdote like oh my loyalty program is very valuable because it, it delivers xyz outcomes for my business but actually valuing these loyalty programs as assets that could be transacted in an ipo through a, a partial sale or a majority sale um, and by taking a very very uh, analytical and market-based approach looking at loyalty program transactions across a number of different industries we've been able to validate that indeed there is a significant hidden value that's locked in uh, within these loyalty programs. And we believe that we're gonna see in years to come, uh, financial services companies becoming a lot more conscious of that value, looking to leverage it, looking to invest more heavily into their rewards programs. Um, and that's a very, very exciting future. Thank you very much. And I believe for those who are interested in this research, they will be able to find this uh, paper on the Ascendus website. That's right. And, you know, one of the additional things that we set out to uncover with the research was secondarily to just the valuations, was also looking for patterns of what characteristics are shared by some of the most valued loyalty programs in financial services. Are there any common trends or themes? So what we did is in the ranking of 50 programs that we established, we looked at the first 10, which we call the leaders, and then the next 40, which we labeled as um, the followers. And looking at many characteristics within their rewards program to see, are there things that really differentiate the leaders from the followers? And there were some fascinating insights there. Um, one very clear, finding is that the redemption offering or the content of rewards that uh, is contained within each program plays a very significant role in differentiating the leaders from the followers. So with the followers, you're going to more commonly find some of those traditional, I call them slightly boring uh, content items, whether that's just sort of gift cards, um, cashback, uh, or merch, physical merchandise. And among the leaders is where you find more nuanced, innovative and experiential aspirational uh, experiences, which are really creating that that additional uh, emotional connection with the customer. The second finding was that the leaders tend to have invested already a little bit more in making their loyalty programs or rewards programs uh, standalone brands. 
So you think about American Express, their program is branded as membership rewards, it has its own logo, it has its own recognition within a premium customer base, and hence plays much more as a standalone, um, as a standalone asset. Whereas other players that are perhaps not so mature on their rewards journey, there's no branding, there's no um, connection that the customer has with the rewards program in particular. Maybe the, the currency is just called points generically, right? Whereas with, with other brands, you've got membership rewards points, or you've got something that creates a special identification and connection for that currency and helps elevate its value. So the branding definitely also plays uh, an important role. So we're looking forward to seeing more financial services companies also building out their rewards brands uh, as distinct recognized names. Thank you. That's very interesting to find out about the details of the uh, rewards programs. Um, so <clears throat> my next question probably will will be answered by the research that you have carried out and you might have to uh, you help us to throw more light into this question, which is what is the potential of reward programs for financial services industry in the future? Yeah, so one industry or one space that we're really excited about is fintech. Rewards are obviously already very well established and have a firm place within traditional financial services. Um, payment cards obviously being a very popular uh, domain for rewards. But what we're seeing with, with fintech is that it's still very, very early days, right? We have neobanks, we have wallets, we have now BNPL and many other, other areas, uh, including crypto and so on, all still being relatively early in their journey as, as new maturing industries. And generally when industries are still new, that means that they can compete on the simple characteristics of the product, a beautiful user experience, low fees and things like that. But when industries start to mature a little bit more and the market starts to get more crowded, brands have to find new ways to differentiate. And often that's the point in time when rewards start playing a much bigger role. So we're now starting, starting to see this just in the last one or two years with neobanks, for example. Right? For many years, neobanks have been entirely focused on simple and beautiful user experience and perhaps low fees. But it's clear that that alone is now no longer enough. And so you're seeing big players um, like Revolut, but also smaller new emerging neobanks starting to experiment with rewards for the first time. And we believe that it's only the beginning because the market of, uh, of fintechs, no matter which area you're in, you look in, whether it's crypto or BNPL, it's going to increasingly crowd, which is great because variety creates good competition, creates feature innovation, but it also means that brands will be looking for new ways to differentiate. And this is where people naturally start looking to rewards as an incentive to add a new element to the value proposition. So we see very big things in store and we're very excited uh, for what fintechs are going to be doing with rewards uh, in the future. Sebastian, it was a pleasure speaking with you. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much.